Elliot Roger was an American spree killer who, on May the 23rd, 2014, at age 22, ended the lives of six innocent people in Isla Vista, California. His rationale for doing this? Simply put, he was punishing society because no girls would sleep with him. However, as I will discuss, this is an oversimplification and Elliot was a dangerous combination of misogynism, racism and extreme narcissism. An individual who believed he was, quote, the supreme gentleman, which meant he was entitled to anything he wanted, and those who did not comply deserved to be eliminated. As if Elliot's beliefs and crimes were not horrific enough, he's become a revered figure within the world of involuntary celibates, known as incels, and his words and deeds have been linked to other acts of terror and murder. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Elliot Oliver Robertson Roger was born on the 24th of July 1991 in London in the UK to his Malaysian Chinese mother Lee Chin and his father, British filmmaker Peter Roger. I tend to refer to the subjects of my videos by their last names, but as his first and last names could both be first names, I'm just going to refer to him as Elliot, otherwise it may cause confusion, mainly to myself. Whilst there's plenty of information about Elliot's upbringing from official sources, the intricacies of his life, including his perception of his situations and people, is contained within his manifesto slash autobiography, which he completed just prior to his death. This 137-page diatribe, entitled, quote, My Twisted World, is a fascinating and yet horrifying piece of prose, filled with hate, self-delusion, perceived persecution, and self-entitlement. It's a chilling document when you consider that it's basically the rambling self-delusion of a murderer who, by the time of writing it, had already decided to execute members of society because he could not get what he wanted. It begins with the following paragraph, quote, Humanity, all of my suffering on this world has been at the hands of humanity, particularly women. It has made me realise just how brutal and twisted humanity is as a species. All I ever wanted was to fit in, and live a happy life amongst humanity, but I was cast out and rejected, forced to endure an existence of loneliness and insignificance, all because the females of the human species were incapable of seeing the value in me. This is the story of how I, Elliot Roger, came to be. This is the story of my entire life. It is a dark story of sadness, anger and hatred. It's a story of war against cruel injustice. In this magnificent story, I'll disclose every single detail about my life, every single significant experience that I've pulled from my superior memory, as well as how these experiences have shaped my views of the world. This tragedy did not just happen, I didn't want things to turn out this way, but humanity forced my hand, and this story will explain why. My life didn't start out dark and twisted, I started out as a happy and blissful child, living my life to the fullest in a world I thought was good and pure. I will refer to this document throughout this video to highlight key moments in Elliot's life and how he perceived them and how he devolved into a killer. Elliot was raised in a privileged household, in large part due to his father's work as a professional photographer and then a filmmaker, with him being the assistant director on the original Hunger Games movie in 2012. His mother was also involved in the film industry and Elliot wrote about attending preschool at Dorset House School, West Sussex, where fees begin at around £10,000 a year, so around $12,000. Elliot also described going on frequent holidays abroad, and some years later, even walking the red carpet at the premiere of Star Wars Episode One in 1999, due to his mother's friendship with George Lucas. Just before his fifth birthday, his parents gave birth to a sister, Georgia. Soon after this, the family moved to California so his father could be at the heart of the film industry. I think the initial seeds of what Elliot became were sown during these early years. Obviously people with means who have children will try and give them the best life possible and the best experiences, which is completely understandable. However, I think this needs to be balanced with a reality check, showing them you need to earn things, they're not just handed to you. Just because you come from this background, it doesn't automatically make you special. The true measure of a man is not the size of his bank account. However, I think, for whatever reason, Elliot was not taught this as a child, and he felt entitled to special treatment from others, believing that he was superior, 
and it was everyone else's job to recognise this and cater to his needs. At age seven, Elliot's parents separated. It's clear from his own writings this had a significant impact on him as it took him completely by surprise. Elliot wrote regarding this, quote, very shortly after my seventh birthday, the news came. I believe it was my mother who told me that she and my father were getting a divorce. My mother, who only a few months before told me that such a thing would never happen. I was absolutely shocked, outraged, and above all, overwhelmed. This was a huge life-changing event. I think that this is the first signs of issues with women, with a tiny seed being planted in Elliot's mind that the woman he trusted most in the world, his mother, had essentially lied to him. Soon afterwards, Elliot's father began a relationship with a Moroccan film actress called Sumaya Akaboon. However, clearly there was conflict between her and Elliot with him writing, quote, For the initial period of her being a new member of the family, we got along well and she was quite fun. But soon, she would start to discipline me in a harsh way that I wasn't used to. I felt that because she wasn't my real parent, she had no right to discipline me in such a way, and so I rebelled. That's where the first conflicts arose. There would be many more to come in later years. This was likely Sumaya trying to instill boundaries on Elliot's behaviour, but, likely because he thought he was special and should be allowed to act in any way he wanted, he did not take kindly to this, and, as the years progressed, it's clear that Elliot saw Sumaya as a thorn in his side, with him writing that when he was nine years old, quote, I started to have intense conflicts with Sumaya. I hated the rules she imposed on me, which I believe she had no right to impose, as she wasn't my true parent. Despite his privileged upbringing, it seems that Elliot was actually a very lonely child. He wrote about spending weeks with his mother and father, but during the weeks with his father, he'd be looked after by nannies and barely spend time with his dad. Issues also began to come out at around the age of nine, with Elliot admitting that he'd always had issues with jealousy throughout his life, as well as crippling insecurities. With the latter of these, Elliot was upset he was short for his age and played basketball, believing this would somehow make him taller. With the former issue, Elliot had intense feelings of resentment and jealousy when his playmates would not focus all their attention on him. If he had two friends round, he'd become upset if they began playing with each other and not him. This is an important part of the behaviour of Elliot, which will explain much of his resentment moving forward. Specifically, it appears that Elliot was a timid and shy child who struggled in social interactions. This is not uncommon, and in these situations, even as adults, it's often easier when someone else is leading the conversation or organising events. We can all have a pang of awkwardness or anxiety, and potentially jealousy, when we go to a party with a friend and then they leave us to go to talk to other people we don't know, and we just stand there. But we understand, although it may still be an uncomfortable feeling, this is our issue. Our friend is free to go and do what they please, and people can share their attention without being some kind of swipe at us. We also know that, while some people may come and talk to us, we need to be brave and sometimes take the first step. However, Elliot doesn't appear to have learned this, and as time progressed, he appears to form the opinion that others, and particularly girls, should flock to him, chase him, and pay him full attention without him making any effort. When he entered the room, all eyes should turn to him, and women, even if they were mid-sentence, should drop what they were doing and throw themselves at his feet. If they did not, this was an affront to him personally. Moving forward several years, Elliot became a brother when he was 12 years old, with his father and Sumaya having a baby boy called Jazz. Elliot seemed excited to become a brother, but unfortunately, as his brother grew, Elliot began to see him as a rival, someone who might surpass him and take attention away from him, something he could not stand. All through his early years, it appears that his mother and stepmother would arrange playdates with other children and try to get Elliot to socialise. But by the time he was 13, he had only one friend and struggled to socialise with others. He found solace in online gaming as a distraction from, quote, the harsh realities of life I was too scared to face. Elliot was teased by girls in middle school and one in particular seems to have led him to develop a hatred of girls. He began acting up as a way to get attention with him writing prophetically, quote, As middle school approached its ultimate end, I was having a miserable time there. I was extremely unpopular, widely disliked, and viewed as the weirdest kid in the school. I had to act weird in order to gain attention. I was tired of being the invisible shy child. Infamy, 
is better than total obscurity. High school was an even bigger challenge for Elliot, as he was now going through puberty, and he stated, quote, I developed a very high sex drive, and it would always remain like this. This was the start of hell for me. Going through puberty utterly doomed my existence. It condemned me to a life of suffering and unfulfilled desires. Even at that young age, I felt depressed because I wanted sex, yet I felt unworthy of it. I didn't think I was ever going to experience sex in reality, and I was right. I never did. I was finally interested in girls, but there was no way I could ever get them. And so, my starvation began. The boys in my grade talked about sex a lot. Some of them even told me they had sex with their girlfriends. This was the most devastating and traumatizing thing I've heard in my life. Boys having sex at my age of 14, I couldn't fathom it. How is it they're able to have such intimate and pleasurable experiences with girls while I can only fantasize about it? I frequently started asking myself, this was an all boys school, how in the hell were these boys able to meet girls to have sex with? I wondered, I hoped they were lying, I hoped against hope. Hearing that really shook me to the core. Words cannot describe how much hatred and envy I felt for those boys. That hatred would only fester the more I suffer from my sexual starvation. I was too scared to tell anyone about it, and I hid it well, for a time. These recent events caused me to withdraw even further away from the world. I drowned all of my misery in my online games. Elliot described his schoolmates bullying him, whilst apparently then returning to their attractive girlfriends. He had scathing resentment towards the bullies, but more so towards the girls they were with. Why did they choose these bullies over him? At the age of 17 years old, Elliot's mindset became more radicalised and he began devolving into the spiteful, hate-filled individual that five years later would go on a killing spree. He wrote that, quote, One day I found some posts on the internet about teenagers having sex and I was once again reminded of the life I've been denied. I felt that no girl would ever want to have sex with me and I developed extreme feelings of envy, hatred and anger towards anyone who has a sex life. I saw them as the enemy. I felt condemned to live a life of lonely celibacy while other boys were allowed to experience the pleasures of sex, all because girls didn't want me. I felt inferior and undesirable. This time, however, I couldn't just stand by and accept such an injustice anymore. I refused to continue hiding away from the world and forgetting about all the insults it's dealt to me. I began to have fantasies of becoming very powerful and stopping everyone from having sex. I wanted to take their sex away from them, just like they took it away from me. I saw sex as an evil and barbaric act, all because I was unable to have it. This was the major turning point. My anger made me stronger inside. This is when I formed my ideas that sex should be outlawed. It's the only way to make the world a fair and just place. If I can't have it, I will destroy it. That's the conclusion I came to, right then and there. I spent more time studying the world seeing the world for the horrible, unfair place it is. I then had the revelation that just because I was condemned to suffer a life of loneliness and rejection doesn't mean I am insignificant. I have an exceptionally high level of intelligence. I see the world differently than anyone else. Because of all of the injustices I went through and the worldview I developed because of them, I must be destined for greatness. I must be destined to change the world, to shape it into an image that suits me. And it seemed to have spent the next two years turning further in on himself, reading books that reinforced his increasingly misogynistic attitudes, cutting himself off from the real world, and losing himself in video games where he would end up in arguments with people if they even mentioned having a girlfriend. On the rare occasions that Elliot would go out with males his own age, and there were girls present, he would sit there and see that these girls had the disrespect to talk to these men and not focus all their attention on him. The really curious thing about Elliot's ramblings is there's almost not a single instance of him ever talking to a girl or going on a date and being rejected. This wouldn't justify his beliefs, but it would enable some level of understanding. Rather, it seems he literally sat on the sidelines, growing more and more resentful whenever he saw any man and woman his age interacting, not trying to do anything about his situation and likely making him unapproachable. I mean, imagine you're a woman walking up to a table with two men and each time you try to interact with one of them, the other is becoming more and more irritable, rude and obnoxious. You're hardly going to want to talk to that person. But in Elliot's world, women should be throwing themselves at his feet, begging him to have sex with them whilst he does nothing. 
because he was entitled to this. He was special, but the world just couldn't see it. He wasn't the problem, everyone else was. At the age of 19 years old, Elliot Roger was becoming more unhinged, and around this time, he moved to an apartment in Santa Barbara to attend the University of California, Santa Barbara, and ominously wrote at this time, quote, The move to Santa Barbara is the end game, the ultimate climax of everything. I saw it as a new chance that was given to me to finally have the things I want in life. Love, sex, friends, fun, acceptance, a sense of belonging. But I can never forgive the world for denying me such things in the past. I was already turning 20 soon. I already lost many years of my life. I deserve better than that. I am an intelligent gentleman. I deserve the love of girls more than the other obnoxious boys of my age. And yet, they get girls and I don't. This is a crime that can never be forgotten, nor can it be forgiven. I always wanted to exact my revenge on humanity for forcing me to live such a life, but I've also always had the hope that if I can do things in my life to make up for all my suffering, then that in itself would be a form of peaceful revenge. In truth, the move to Santa Barbara was actually a chance that I was giving to the world, not the other way around. I was giving the world one last chance to give me the life that I know I'm entitled to, the life that other boys are able to live with ease. If I still have to suffer the same rejection and injustice even after I move to Santa Barbara, then that will be the last straw. I will have my vengeance. However, Elliot found issues almost immediately with Santa Barbara. Despite not leaving the property and doing anything about his situation, he was unhappy that he was not instantly presented with sexual opportunities and resented his housemates, who he claimed would frequently brag about their success with girls. Elliot's musings then demonstrate his racist attitudes and his extreme narcissistic beliefs, with him writing about his annoyance with an African-American man who had more success with women than him. Quote, How could an inferior, ugly, black boy be able to get a white girl and not me? I am beautiful, and I'm half white myself. I am descended from British aristocracy. He is descended from slaves. I deserve it more. I tried not to believe his foul words, but they were already said... It was hard to erase them from my mind. If this is actually true, if this ugly black filth was able to have sex with a blonde white girl at the age of 13, whilst I've had to suffer virginity all my life, then this just proves how ridiculous the female gender is. They would give themselves to this filthy scum, but they reject me, the injustice. Females truly have something mentally wrong with them. Their minds are flawed, and at this point in my life, I was beginning to see it. The more I explored my college town of Isla Vista, the more ridiculousness I witnessed. All of the hot, beautiful girls walked around with obnoxious, tough, jock-type men who passed all the time and acted crazy. They should be going for intelligent gentlemen such as myself. Women are sexually attracted to the wrong type of men. This is a major flaw in the very foundation of humanity. It's completely and utterly wrong in every sense of the word. As these truths fully dawned on me, I became deeply disturbed by them, deeply disturbed, offended and traumatised. College was like a red rag to a bull for Elliot. He was surrounded by thousands of young couples and each time he saw this, he became more and more enraged about his apparent injustice in life. He deserved these things, yet no one was simply handing this to him. So, in his mind, no one should have anything. Around this time, Elliot began recording videos to upload to YouTube moaning about how unfair his life was and he appears to have driven round specifically looking for situations to antagonise himself and then filming them as shown by this video. Elliot Roger here. I'm just sitting in my car right now enjoying the view of the beach and my view has been ruined by this sight right here. In front of me, sitting right there on that bench, is a young couple I was enjoying such a nice view until they came and sat down and started kissing. This is the reason why life isn't fair. Why can't I experience something like that? I have to show everyone why I hate the world. Because no girl would do this with me. I hate them. I hate them so much. It's not fair. Life 
is not fair. Elliot soon began acting on his anger, initially in small ways, including following a couple out of Starbucks and throwing his coffee over their car, and later, filling a super soaker with orange juice and squirting couples in the park. Elliot wrote, quote, It was around this point in my life that I realised I was capable of doing such things. I would happily do such things. I was capable of killing them, and I wanted to. I wanted to kill them slowly, to strip the skins off their flesh. They deserve it. The males deserve it for taking the females away from me, and the females deserved it for choosing those males instead of me. Ever since I was 17, I often fantasised about becoming powerful and inflicting suffering upon everyone who has wronged me in the past, but I never thought I'd actually do it. At this point, after going through so much suffering and injustice, all of my innocence had been swept away. The world had been cruel to me, and it moulded me to become strong enough to actually have the capability of returning that cruelness to the world. I had never been a violent person in nature, but after building up so much hatred over the years, I realised that I wouldn't hesitate to kill, or even torture my hated enemies, if I was given the opportunity. In around 2012, Elliot began to plan for, quote, the day of retribution, where he would take revenge on society, and especially the girls who shunned him. He stated, quote, My first act of preparation was the purchase of my first handgun. I did this quickly and hastily, at a local gun shop called Galetta Gun and Supply. I had already done some research on handguns, and I decided to purchase the Glock 34 semi-automatic pistol, an efficient and highly accurate weapon. I signed all of the papers, I was told my pickup day was in mid-December. That fell in nicely, because that was when I was planning on staying in Santa Barbara till. After I picked up the handgun, I brought it back to my room and felt a new sense of power. I was now armed. Who's the alpha male now, bitches? I thought to myself, regarding all of the girls who've looked down on me in the past. I quickly admired my new weapon before locking it up in my safe and preparing to go back to my hometown for the winter break. In spring 2013, Elliot purchased another two handguns and began collecting ammunition and planning his revenge, which was underpinned by his belief that, quote, women must be punished for their crimes of rejecting such a magnificent gentleman as myself. Around this time, Elliot joined online forums with similarly disturbed and misogynistic young men who were apparently starved of sex. No doubt, on these forums, Elliot found kindred spirits and they reinforced his own views of women and cemented his perception that he was the victim, with him writing, quote, I concluded that women are flawed. There is something mentally wrong with the way their brains are wired, as if they haven't evolved from animal-like thinking. They're incapable of reason or thinking rationally. They're like animals, completely controlled by their primal, depraved emotions and impulses. This is what they're attracted to, barbaric, wild, beast-like men. They're beasts themselves. Beasts should not be able to have any rights in a civilised society. If their wickedness is not contained, the whole of humanity will be held back from advancement to a more civilised state. Women should not have the right to choose who to mate with. That choice should be made for them by civilised men of intelligence. If women have the freedom to choose which men to mate with, like they do today, they would breed with stupid, degenerate men, which would only produce stupid, degenerate offspring. This in turn would hinder the advancement of humanity. Not only hinder it, but devolve humanity completely. Women are like a plague that must be quarantined. When I came to this brilliant, perfect revelation, I felt like everything was now clear to me in a bitter, twisted way. I am one of the few people on this world who has the intelligence to see this. I am like a god, and my purpose is to exact ultimate retribution on all of the impurities I see in the world. So women are inferior and should literally be presented to men like him to have sex with. No consent, no choice in the matter. Sounds like rape to me. Many articles I've read have said that Elliot Roger did what he did because he couldn't get a girlfriend. This is completely incorrect. Elliot Roger was not interested in a girlfriend. He was not interested in any emotional connection with a female. He saw women merely as objects to get his sexual needs met. Like a classic narcissist, he saw value only in what people could give to him. Hence why he was advocating basically a system where women would be used and abused by men based on an allocation system, with him likely seeing himself as the overseer of this twisted system. From approximately 2012, Elliot was completely alone. His behaviour and attitudes had pushed everyone away. However, concerns about his mental health were flagged 
but not acted upon. Specifically, in April 2014, just weeks before the rampage, his mother found the videos that Elliot had posted on YouTube and was concerned, so called one of his counsellors. The counsellor called mental health services and then the police. Santa Barbara County Sheriff's deputies showed up at Elliot's doorstep to check on his mental health. However, they weren't aware of any of the videos. They determined that Elliot was a well-mannered, if shy young man who posed no risk. They then left. This was the last opportunity to stop Elliot. There would be no more chances. Elliot had planned his day of retribution in great detail, writing the following long description. He said, quote, On the day before the day of retribution, I will start the first phase of my vengeance, slightly killing as many people as I can around Isla Vista by luring them into my apartment through some form of trickery. The first people I would have to kill are my two housemates to secure the entire apartment for myself as my personal torture and killing chamber. After that, I'll start luring people into my apartment, knock them out with a hammer and slit their throats. I'll torture some of the good looking people before I kill them assuming that the good-looking ones had the best sex lives. All of that pleasure they had in their life, I will punish by bringing them pain and suffering. I've lived a life of pain and suffering, and it was time to bring that pain to people who actually deserve it. I will cut them, flay them, strip all the skin off their flesh, and pour boiling water all over them while they're still alive, as well as any other form of torture I can possibly think of. When they're dead, I'll behead them and keep their heads in a bag, for their heads will play a major role in the final phase. This first phase will represent my vengeance against all of the men who have had pleasurable sex lives while I've had to suffer. Things will be fair once I make them suffer as I did. I will finally even the score. The second phase will take place on the day of retribution itself, just before the climactic massacre. The second phase will represent my war on women. I will punish all females for the crime of depriving me of sex. They have starved me of sex for my entire youth and gave that pleasure to other men. In doing so, they took many years of my life away. I cannot kill every single female on earth, but I can deliver a devastating blow that will shake all of them to the core of their wicked hearts. I will attack the very girls who represent everything I hate in the female gender, the hottest sorority of UCSB. After doing a lot of extensive research within the last year, I found out that the sorority were the most beautiful girls is Alpha Phi Sorority. I know exactly where their house is, and I've sat outside it in my car to stalk them many times. Alpha Phi Sorority is full of hot, beautiful blonde girls, the kind of girls I've always desired, but was never able to have because they all look down on me. They're all spoilt, heartless, wicked bitches. They think they're superior to me, and if I ever tried to ask them on a date, they would reject me cruelly. I will sneak into their house at around 9pm on the day of retribution, just before all of the partying starts and slaughter every single one of them with my guns and knives. If I have time, I'll set their whole house on fire, then we shall see who the superior one really is. The final phase of the Day of Retribution will be my ultimate showdown in the streets of Isla Vista. On the morning before, I will drive down to my father's house to kill my little brother, denying him of the chance to grow up to surpass me, along with my stepmother, Sumaya, as she will be in the way. My father will be away on one of his business trips, so thankfully, I won't have to deal with him. If he didn't go away on that trip, I might even have to postpone the whole plan because of my fear that I might hesitate if I had to kill him. Once I've taken care of my brother and stepmother, I will switch to the Mercedes SUV and drive it back to the Isla Vista. I will use it as one of my killing machines against my enemies. An SUV will cause a lot more damage than my BMW. After I have killed all of the sorority girls at the Alpha Phi house, I will quickly get into the SUV before the police arrive, assuming they would arrive within three minutes. I will then make my way to Del Playa, splattering as many of my enemies as I can with the SUV and shooting anyone I don't splatter. I can only imagine how sweet it will be to ram the SUV into all of these groups of popular young people who have always witnessed walking right in the middle of the road as if they are better than everyone else. When they are writhing in pain, their bodies broken and dying after I splatter them, they will fully realise their crimes. Once I reach Del Playa Street, I will dump the bag of severed heads I have saved from my previous victims 
proclaiming to everyone how much I've made them all suffer. Once they see all of their friends' heads roll onto the street, everyone will fear me as the powerful god I am. I will then start massacring everyone on Del Playa Street. I will pull up next to house parties and fire bullets at everyone partying on the front yard. I will specifically target the good looking people and all of the couples. After I have destroyed a house party, I will continue down Del Playa, destroying everything and everyone. When I see the first police car come to their rescue, I will drive away as fast as I can, shooting and ramming anyone in my path until I find a suitable place to finally end my life. Eventually, Elliot Rogers chose Friday, May the 23rd, 2014, for his day of revenge. The day before, Elliot recorded his last YouTube video. In it, like in his other videos, he's extremely smug and acting like some sort of Marvel supervillain. It would be pathetic if it wasn't for the fact this man was fully willing to end the lives of others due to his own inadequacies. Hi. Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. For the last eight years of my life, ever since I've hit puberty, I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires, all because girls have never been attracted to me. Girls gave their affection and sex and love to other men, but never to me. I'm 22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. I've never even kissed a girl. I've been through college for two and a half years, more than that actually, and I'm still a virgin. That has been very torturous. College is the time when everyone experiences those things such as sex and fun and, and pleasure. But in those years I've had to rot in loneliness. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime, because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy, and yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> On the day of retribution, I am going to enter the hottest sorority house of UCSB. And I will slaughter every single spoiled, stuck-up, blonde slut I see inside there. All those girls that I've desired so much, they would have all rejected me and looked down upon me as an inferior man if I ever made a sexual advance towards them. While they throw themselves at these obnoxious brutes. I'll take great pleasure in slaughtering all of you. You will finally see that I am, in truth, the superior one, the true alpha male. <laughs> yes. After I've annihilated every single girl in the sorority house, I'll take to the streets of Isla Vista and slay every single person I see there. All those popular kids who live such lives of hedonistic pleasure while I've had to rot in loneliness for all these years. They've all looked down upon me every time I tried to go out and join them. They've all treated me like a mouse. Well now, I will be a god compared to you. 
will all be animals. You are animals, and I will slaughter you like animals. And I'll be a god, exacting my retribution on all those who deserve it. And you do deserve it, just for the crime of living a better life than me. All you popular kids, you've never accepted me. And now you all pay for it. And girls, all I've ever wanted was to love you and to be loved by you. I wanted a girlfriend. I wanted sex. I wanted love, affection, adoration. But you think I'm unworthy of it. That's a crime that can never be forgiven. If I can't have you, girls, I will destroy you. <laughs> you denied me a happy life. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. <laughs> it's only fair. I hate all of you. Humanity is a disgusting, wretched, depraved species. If I had it in my power, I would stop at nothing to reduce every single one of you to mountains of skulls and rivers of blood. And rightfully so. You deserve to be annihilated. And I'll give that to you. You never showed me any mercy, and so I will show you none. <laughs> you forced me to suffer all my life, and now I'll make you all suffer. I've waited a long time for this. I'll give you exactly what you deserve, all of you, all you girls who rejected me and looked down upon me and, you know, treated me like scum while you gave yourselves to other men, and all of you men for living a better life than me, all of you sexually active men, I hate you, I hate all of you, I can't wait to give you exactly what you deserve. Utter annihilation. <laughs> At around 5 pm on May the 23rd, 2014, Elliot Rogers stabbed to death his two flatmates, 20 year old Wei Han Wang and 20 year old Chen Hong. He also murdered their friend, 19 year old George Chen, who was visiting, again by repeatedly stabbing him. All three were best friends. George volunteered for a Buddhist organisation and often helped elderly neighbours get their mail and take out the rubbish. A former high school friend described Cheng as, quote, the kindest kid, so generous, so giving, always willing to help people out. Wei Han's mother lamented how she could carry on with her life without her son in the world. Elliot then spent the next several hours preparing for the second part of his plan. At around 8pm, he went to a local Starbucks to get a latte, and at 8.30pm was seen in his vehicle working on his laptop. By 9pm, Elliot was driving his BMW north to the Alpha Phi sorority house. When he got there, he found the door was locked, and sorority members heard loud and aggressive knocking at the front door. Luckily, no one opened it to him. However, Elliot started shooting at young women who were standing outside the building. One survived but two, 19-year-old Veronica Weiss and Katie Cooper, aged 22, both died. As opposed to the monsters that Elliot portrayed these women to be, they were both exceptional, who were loved and would have made a difference to the world. Veronica was described as someone obsessed with sport and a kind-hearted person. Katie was weeks away from graduating and a high school teacher stated, quote, she was one of 2,500 students I've taught over the years but Katie was a standout. 
Elliot then travelled south and began firing into an unoccupied coffee shop on Pardow Road and then into the Isla Vista Deli Mart as shown by this terrifying footage. It was here that 20-year-old Christopher Ross Michael Martinez was hit seven times and died almost immediately. Chris was a man with aspirations. After graduating, he was planning on going to law school, but he was cut down in his prime. Elliot continued driving south on the wrong side of the road, hitting a pedestrian and firing at two others, who he missed. He then shot a couple coming out of a pizza parlour and fired at another woman but missed. Elliot then drove in a loop around a city block and engaged in a gun battle with sheriff's deputies. Elliot continued driving erratically, hitting two pedestrians with his car before shooting and wounding three passers-by. Elliot then struck another skateboarder with his car and shot and wounded two men. Elliot then exchanged gunfire with three sheriff's deputies and was shot in the hip. Pursued by police, Elliot hit another cyclist before crashing into the curb. At 9.30pm, police approached Elliot's car and found him dead in the driver's seat, having put a bullet in his own brain. Found in the vehicle were his guns and over 500 rounds of unspent ammunition. Elliot's rampage claimed the lives of six people, not including him, and injured 14 others, seven of whom were shot and seven who had suffered blunt force trauma from being hit by his vehicle. The community of Isla Vista was in shock by the mindless violence that had claimed the lives of six innocent students. There were, as is often the case after these events, discussions about gun control, with it being pointed out how easily Elliot Roger was able to gain access to guns. But, as is always the case, nothing really seems to have changed. However, the most sickening part of this case is the veneration of Elliot Roger after his act of pure evil. Since the dawn of the internet, there have always been unstable and hate-filled people filling message boards with bile, but after the crimes of Elliot, the number of message boards devoted to the involuntary celibate movement, commonly known as incels, exploded, with dedicated web forums being created at an alarming rate. The common theme of these forums? Hero worship of Elliot Roger, including pictures of his face superimposed on pictures of saints with him being known as Saint Elliot, and his videos on YouTube enabling disturbed individuals to espouse their admiration of the actions of this coward. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. Elliot has been cited as the inspiration of several disturbed men who have gone on killing sprees of their own. For example, Alex Manassian, the perpetrator of the 2018 Toronto van attack, which killed 11 people and injured 15 others, cited Elliot Roger as his inspiration for the massacre. In the UK, 22-year-old Jake Davidson was obsessed with the incel movement and, like Elliot, posted videos of himself ranting about his rejection by women. Davidson eventually went on a killing spree in Plymouth in the UK on the 12th of August 2021, in which he killed five people with a shotgun, including his mother and a three-year-old child, before taking his own life. I'll cover both of these cases in future videos. However, it's clear that the horrific crimes of Elliot Roger have given a face to a dangerous and insidious movement that has spread across the world. It's enabled potentially dangerous people to be able to justify their internal hate, nurture it, and then project it onto the world as a whole, resulting in the murders of innocent people who have usually never met the person who killed them and have had their lives snatched away from them simply because these weak, pathetic men are unable to accept rejection or the fact that the world does not revolve around them. This whole video has been a profile of Elliot Roger, but I wish to give my final thoughts and bring everything together. The more I look into Elliot Roger, the more disturbing and dangerous his case becomes. In my opinion, he was a combination of some of the most concerning personality traits which a person can possess. He was extremely narcissistic, entitled, arrogant, clearly psychopathic, 
misogynistic, racist and violent. Elliot expected the world just to fall into his lap and, as I said earlier, it's fascinating reading his insane ramblings over 137 pages as there is almost no reference to him actually doing anything about his lack of sex. He never seems to have spoken to any girls and generally seems to think that women should have fallen at his feet, removed all their clothes and begged him to have sex with them. Elliot's callousness is shown not only by his crimes but the extent of his plans which included torturing and beheading people he was jealous of and even killing his 10 year old brother just in case he surpassed him one day. This epitomises Elliot. If he can't have things, no one can. If someone is a threat to him, they deserve to die. I do have some sympathy for the child that Elliot was. Lonely, awkward and struggling to fit in. At the core of him was a deep dark hole of insecurity and fear. However, I have no sympathy for the monster he became and his inability to self-reflect and think, hmm, maybe why I'm in this position is because I'm a bit of a douche. I should do something about that. No, instead he externalised everything and deemed society as a whole guilty of his failings and, acting as judge, jury and executioner, he meted out punishment even though most of the people he killed and tried to kill had no idea who he was and had nothing to do with his situation. His actions also demonstrate his utter cowardice. He killed himself in order to avoid being held accountable for his actions, knowing that he would spend the rest of his life in prison, likely on death row, and he would have lost control. I dread to think what would have happened if Elliot had lived long enough to find a woman to have sex with. I imagine this woman would have quickly become the centre of his obsession, with him demanding sex whenever he wanted, and this would have likely occurred, in my opinion, whether she consented or not. I imagine he would have been a stalker, someone who refused to take no for an answer or be marginalised from someone's life. Worse still, an actual girlfriend. I think any woman who had been in a relationship with Elliot would have been controlled, demeaned, raped and generally horrifically abused repeatedly given his perception of women as objects, his underlying insecurities and his violent tendencies. I have little doubt that if a girlfriend or woman he had sex with rejected him, he would have killed them. Outside of relationships, I think Elliot's words are quite insightful into the fact that at 22 years old, he seemed to think he was the most persecuted human being on earth. This makes me think that he was wholly unprepared for life in general, and that he might have faced many situations in his life, for example losing a job, being demoted, and responded with extreme violence towards whoever he felt aggrieved by. Elliot Roger claimed to be the victim. However, these are the real victims. He was a pathetic creature whose continued reverence by a small group of equally disturbed individuals is testament to their own delusional thinking and is not shared by wider society, where this man is rightly reviled. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, then please give it a like, share it and subscribe to the channel. Also, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button and, if you're feeling generous, you can send a super thanks using the thanks button, but no pressure. My main hope is that my content is enjoyed by you guys. Anyway, take care and I'll see you in the next one.